Hi, this is Dave Edstrom. I'm the CTO for Memex, as well as formerly I was the President and Chairman of the Board of the MT Connect Institute from 2010 to 2014. Today I'm going to take about 10 minutes of your time to talk to you about the three A's of MT Connect, which are the adapter, the agent, and the application. Let's look at the world prior to MT Connect. We had applications, and we had the United Nations for the shop or plant floor. The reason why I refer to this as United Nations is that each of the machine tools spoke a different language. What this meant is that it was very difficult and usually expensive to get information from a machine tool. And when we look at the numbers that are out there, it's really quantified where only about 2 to 3 percent of all shops today are monitoring what's happening on their plant floor. And the reason why is because of this United Nations and there not being any type standard to do so. Well, when you are going to connect applications to these different machine tools, each application has to write a unique device driver or translator to speak to these various machine tools. We see here a small shopper plant which is five machine tools and maybe we just have a few apps, we'll just use five to keep things straight here, that want to talk to these machine tools. We end up having 25 different connections and because of this that's why we only saw the two or three percent of all shops or plants were being monitored. It was extremely difficult and it was also very expensive. How did things change with MT Connect? With MT Connect we have the same shopper plant floor, we have the applications, but what we've done is we've moved the translation from the applications having to figure it, it out to where it belongs, which is where the machine tools sit. So the machine tools translate from their local proprietary language to MT Connect. And as you can see here, we went from 25 different device drivers for the five apps, talking five machine tools, to just MT Connect. And since MT Connect is based on open standards such as XML and HTTP, it makes it very easy to get information from an MT Connect enabled device. The way to think about what MT Connect is, is think about it as the Bluetooth for manufacturing. In the same way that when you get into your car, that your smartphone attaches to your audio system on your car so you can talk hands-free when a call comes in, or you can send your favorite podcast to your audio system on your car. That's what MT Connect is. It's that standard protocol that sits between machine tools or devices and your applications. MT Connect is elegant in its simplicity because essentially what it does is it turns a device into a simple web server. And since all applications today know how to speak HTTP and XML, that it makes it just absolutely brain dead easy to get information from an MT Connect enabled device. Now let's look at this from a developer standpoint and let's just see you know what would be easier for developers but let's first look at the world prior to MT Connect with proprietary protocol and we see here a developer screen and the developer needs to figure out what these ones and zeros might mean sitting on a CNC control someplace or perhaps a protocol that's moving by. So they have to take the time to reverse engineer it if it's not documented to figure out how do I get this data, number one. And the hard question typically is what does this data really mean? These ones and zeros going by, is this spindle speed? Is this an alarm? Did an e-stop just happen? Um, is there some condition? Um, is it movement on the X, Y axis? You know, what's happening here? So it, it was a non-trivial problem. So with MT Connect, one of the huge differences is that it's machine readable and human readable. And most importantly, it comes with a dictionary. So let, let's take a little bit deeper dive on what is the secret sauce with MT Connect. It was really the hard part, quite honestly. So if we look at that first white box, that white box is just showing information that would be available from a machine tool that's MT Connect enabled. So as you can see there, you know, you can read this as a human and your computer can read it, your software can read it. And it's talking about availability, talking about asset change, right? Very straightforward. Now the second white box is the dictionary. 
And what this is talking about is the number of assets. And as relates to MT Connect, an asset could be a cutting tool, for example. So what it's showing here is that there's something called asset count, and it's an integer number, and it has a value that could be anywhere from zero to up to about 4.2 billion. And what's nice about this and why developers love this is they don't have to guess what those values are because this dictionary not only tells them what those bits mean, but they tell them what are the possible values. So for, for example, we might have a controlled vocabulary where it is whatever is showing on the stack light or perhaps it's the speed of a spindle. But again, there's the dictionary that tells the developer what are the possible values here and what, what does this mean? So it really is a huge deal and a big difference between MT Connect and OPC, for example, where OPC, it's left to the developer to figure out what do those bits mean. OPC is a transport mechanism. It provides the tunnel, but there's no dictionary. So it's sort of like reading a book where you run into a language you've never seen before, but there's no translation guide. Obviously, that would not be a fun experience. So software developers, they want to write application that gives value to their customers as fast and as efficiently as possible in the widest possible audience. So what does that mean? Well, it means that they really don't want to spend time having to figure all this out. And MT Connect makes their life a lot easier, and it really opens up a world of applications to them. So MT Connect is a huge deal for manufacturing and is the de facto standard. So let's take a deeper dive here on the adapter, the agent, and the app from a little bit more technical point of view. We have the device, and we've talked about that it could be a machine tool, but it could be a bar feeder, a compressor, a sensor, could be a garage door opener, um, it could be a light, you know, it could be an amperage meter, it, anything could be MT Connect enabled, literally anything. So the first thing the developer has to figure out is how do I get the information? What does it mean? Is it a bunch of ones and zeros? Is it FANUC focus? Is it FANUC IO link that I might be listening to? Is it OPC? Um, is it an analog or digital signal? Or is it West Virginia's Billy Bob's protocol because Billy Bob has his own machine tool and Billy Bob wrote this particular protocol and you have to know Billy Bob in order to get it. So the adapter is hardware and or software that speaks to the device and is getting all of this information. Depending on the nature of the device, it could be a whole lot of information, or it could be very little information if it's just, let's say, an on-off switch. If it's a machine tool, it could be a, a tremendous amount of information if it's capturing everything the machine tool's doing as it goes through, like on a five-access um, machine tool. So the adapter speaks to the agent. And this is not part of the MT Connect spec, the shutter protocol, simple hierarchical data representation, but it's clearly the most popular protocol that is being used, and there's reference adapters and a reference agent that's out at github.com slash mtconnect. What this is showing is that the information from the adapter is being constantly streamed to the agent. In other words, the adapter is talking to the device, it's getting all the information, on what that device is capable of relaying to the adapter and how the adapter has been written. And then the adapter converts that to Shutter, and Shutter looks like what you see below here, where you see a timestamp and it is pipe delimited. So you see 2015, 29th of September, you see the time, and then you see those uh, high oil temperature warning. So that's being sent nonstop over to the agent. Now the agent, is gathering that information so that it can be, make it available to applications. And the agent has a few configuration files, such as agent.config, devices.xml. There's also a schema definition file that we've talked about. And the agent stores this in a circular buffer. Now, to the outside world, the agent simply looks like a website. So, for example, the application could be talking to Edstrom, mt.memexinc.net. And what's happening is that in the same way you go out to ESPN.com in the morning to see how your favorite sports team is doing, 
with MT Connect, you're issuing a, um, the same HTTP commands, but you're issuing them by just putting a slash behind the net. So for example, you would put in um, HTTP colon slash slash edstrommt.memxinc.net slash probe. That would come back and say, here are the physical components that are made up this of this device, and it could be a machine tool or something else. And then it says, here's the information that I can provide to you. And again, it provides a data dictionary so you know what this means. From that point forward, you could use the current command to see what it's currently doing, or what most companies do, programmers, is they use the sample command where they're sampling it X number of times per second, and then they're storing that in a database, and then that database might make it available to a shop floor monitoring app such as Merlin. So when we look at the flow here, what's really important is that it starts off at the device, the adapter is pulling all of the information that it can from the device, it moves over to shutter in shutter format to the agent, and then whether we have one app or a thousand apps, they're only talking to that agent. In other words, apps never talk to the adapter, apps never talk to the device. That wall is very important because what it allows you to do is to not burden the device such as machine tool where as you get more people monitoring it, it could start slowing it down and could affect the part. So the agent acts as that master traffic cop, if you will. One of the phrases about MT Connect is different devices slash common connection. You can learn more about MT Connect by looking at my book or picking my book up. It's available at Amazon in hard copy format. It's available in Kindle. It's available on iTunes as well as Google Play. Also, at memexinc.net slash mtconnect, we have lots of information there about MT Connect, and you can go there to learn about this, and we would be happy to answer any questions that you have about MT Connect or shop floor monitoring applications such as Merlin. So again, this is Dave Edstrom. I'm the CTO for Memex. I'd like to thank you for listening and watching to the three A's of MT Connect, the adapter, the agent, and the application.